Hi, my name is Sol Opie One, and welcome to the 2019 F1 Australian Grand Prix Race Day Review. And all I can say is, Valtteri Bottas, congratulations. He deserved it. He totally deserved it. After the season he had last year, the disappointed, how disappointed he was in himself. How Mercedes was disappointed in him. The way he was in Formula 3 and Formula 2. How good he was, the potential Valtteri Bottas had showed today. It showed today. Valtteri Bottas, P1, on top of the table, 26 points. It would have been 25 points, but he got the fastest lap of the race as well to earn him that extra point. And he has now got 26 points, Valtteri Bottas. Who would ever thought, after the first race of the season, that Valtteri Bottas would be on top of the F1 table? And who would ever thought that at the end of the first race that Ferrari wouldn't even get on the podium? This big expectations of Ferrari for winter testing, through practice session, this big expectations. Everybody thought this was Ferrari's time. I know it's only the first race, but they didn't even get on the podium. Now the Ferrari marks on the internet are all going, oh yeah, Vettel's car. Oh, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Whatever excuses, it doesn't matter. The fact is that Valtteri Bottas won. He won the Australian Grand Prix. And Lewis Hamilton came in on second. He was second, so that's good for the constructors. One and two Mercedes. One and two Mercedes. Now... Do I think something was wrong with Hamilton's car? Maybe. He said after the race that he thought, actually he said he knows what's wrong with the car. He just has to speak to his engineers. I don't know. He knows, maybe he does know, I don't know. But you can't take, you can't take the victory away from Valtteri Bottas. It was well deserved. Now, during this race, as soon as the race started, and you know what I'm going to talk about, can this guy go through any more? Can he take any more? Yes, I'm talking about Daniel Ricciardo. Last year, his luck was absolutely, the bad luck diminished him. He wasn't the same after last season, but he came into this season, new team with Renault, new start, in his home country of Australia. And he's come into this Grand Prix as a fan favourite. We never expected him to win, but we expected him to finish the race and the retirement. Now, this guy, I hope this bad luck doesn't continue through the season. It just can't continue through this season. So, I'm going to start doing this review. But I just want to take my hat off to Valtteri Bottas. Well deserved. And... Now Valtteri Bottas is... I'm not saying he's gonna even going to win the next Grand Prix. Maybe he may not win in Bahrain and he may not win in China. But he won here. And it's, this is good for Mercedes. It was a team effort. And that's it. I think towards the end, the last 25 laps of the race, I think Hamilton was just playing the cut-off game. I think when he went into the pit, he put the medium tyres on. 
Um, he was there to cover for the undercut, so Ferrari couldn't step him. But Ferrari, I'm not going to get. So I'll I'll get to Ferrari at the end when I get when I go through my notes. So beginning of the race, lights out of the way we go. Um, Crafty, same old, same old, same old. Every race, Crafty goes lights out of the way we go, and Bottas gets a tremendous start. Unbelievable. Surprised Hamilton. Uh, he surprised everybody. He surprised me. Unbelievable start. Bottas just flew away at the front and he just never looked back. As soon as the race started, Bottas was gone. And straight after that, Ricardo loses his wing on his car. He comes onto the grass, hits the curb and his wing, his wing come off. And straight after that, in similar time, Robert Kibitza for the Williams, his wing come off as well. So... Ricardo comes into the pit, changes his wing on his car, comes back out, but his car wasn't the same, but he's still soldiered on. Charles Leclerc on lap five, like, with Charles Leclerc, in during practice, during the practice session, Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari cars, Charles Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel, there's that's the first, I think it was the second or third corner of the Australia of of the the circuit, they kept um the the angle, you know, the attraction, the traction to me don't seem like it's working properly. The steering is not working properly on the Ferrari car, because they kept coming off the track, going onto the grass in practice, and I thought maybe they're just testing some stuff, testing it out. But Charles Leclerc and lap five done the same thing again, goes straight onto the grass, and mows all the grass off the ground. It's going that fast, so he he lost a bit of time there. Carlos Sainz during the race as well. Carlos Sainz retired. It was the first retirement of the 2018 season. Carlos Sainz for McLaren retired. He's, for some reason, his engine just started heating up and fire started coming out the back of it. He stopped his car and I was thinking, you need to get out of that car, mate. Get out of the car before it blows up because the fire was, it was getting kind of big. It took him at least two minutes, in my opinion. It took him two minutes the fire people to come here and put the fire out in the car. I was thinking, come on, mate. We're in 2019, not in fucking 1969. You know what I mean? We're in 2019, man. Do your job. Get to the car. Put the fire out. Took him ages. Now, on to lap 14. Lap 14, Grosjean front left tyre delay. Roman Grosjean... The man, he's another racer who's got bad luck. Lap 14, he comes into the pitch to try and... So he was doing all right as well, Grosjean was. He was doing all right, keeping his position, gaining... He was doing all good. I think Grosjean, man, yeah, man. What happens, he comes into the pitch, lap 14, and the, one of the the, um, the tyre guys, the front left tyre, was sticking. They couldn't get the front left tyre off. There was, try, there was there, there was about a 10 second delay. So he lost, he lost at least five positions. Took the tyre off, took the wheel off, put it back on and... Uh, I think when they put the sec the new tire on, I think it was the medium tires. When they put the new tires on, they didn't bolt that fr front wheel on properly. So he came out the pitch, and started driving for a little bit longer. But further on in the, um, the race, I'll get to that later. But it's obvious they didn't bolt that tire on properly because when he came out the pitch, the, the wheel looked a bit loose. They could have rounded off the nut or something like that. I don't know. Lap fifteen, to me, this is a mistake. Lap fifteen, pitted Vettel. I thought lap 15, that was a big mistake by Ferrari. Pitting Vettel at lap 15, I thought, no, that's too soon. They could have waited a bit longer. Bottas didn't pit till later running in the race. The, um, Max Verstappen didn't pit till later running in the race. I thought Pat, uh, Max, I thought they pitted Vettel too early. Lap 15, put the medium tyres, came out, started racing again. Lewis Hamilton, lap 16, big mistake as well, for my, in my opinion. Pitted Lewis Hamilton, medium tyres, lap 16. It seems like the um, Louis, the Mercedes was trying to um, uh, um, cut off Vettel. So as soon as Vettel went in at lap 15, they wanted to do the undercut. So they brought, lap, they brought in Lewis Hamilton the lap after to, to um, undercut the Ferrari, which it worked. Um, so in my opinion, Vettel wouldn't have picked at lap, um, pitted at lap 15. Would they have pitted, would I have pitted um, Lewis at 16? I don't know. Now, lap 26. Now, this, this, this was a nice little rivalry going on here, a nice little battle. It was going on for about three or four laps. 
lap 20 it starts lap 20 it started went on for about six laps actually lap 20 it started you had Lando Norris buying Giovanni Giovanasti for um, Alfa Romeo Giovanni whatever his name is uh, but Lando Norris was battling man you know when he, you know what Lando Norris a couple of years ago I weren't really a fan of him I don't know what it was it just never I was just never a fan of him um, the way he came across I just thought nah I just don't like the guy I just don't think you know you know when you speak you know when you see someone and you just you just you don't feel right something about it you don't like but um, I watched a few YouTube I, I followed him on um, YouTube um, I subscribed to his channel and I watched him how he, he like that he loves his sim racing really into his sim racing goes to Goes to go karting events. He's a racer's racer, you know. And I just like his personality. I just think he's grown on me. Lando knows he has, he's actually grown on me. Um, I never liked him before. I didn't hate him. I just thought, nah, he's just not my kind of driver. But now I've seen him. Um, he, the way the way he's on his channel, the, his personality, and and the way the, like before the race started, he was just standing there. He had his he was he had his arm on the side of the barrier, and he was just there waiting to start the race. So I thought, you know what? This is a young guy right? he's got confidence, man. I like people who's got confidence. And I like pit racers when they're a bit cocky as well. What Formula One driver's not cocky? If you're not cocky, you're doing something wrong, man. And he was just there and he looked cocky, he looked arrogant. And I thought and I thought, you know what, I like this guy, man. Plus I've watched him on his YouTube channel. I like his personality. And I just thought he's just grown on me, Landon Norris. He was having a great battle he was with Giovanni. And he was just like for six laps trying to pass him and on the twenty sixth lap. Um, Lando Norris passed him and I thought fair play to him man you know what I mean he's Brit from Britain as well and um, he's in the McLaren he, he don't he don't well in he got into Q3 and qualifying as well this guy is a real stuff man he's a real deal so respect to Lando Norris um, he's grown on me man he's grown on me so on to the next big thing in the race um, Vet Ferrari oh that looked terrible Max Verstappen passes um, Vettel on lap 31 you know lap 31 he just passed him got the DRS on him Vettel didn't put up a fight and he just completely demolished Vettel and he just pulled away so fast as well you know that's what you know the, the, the car weren't right today for Ferrari I, I, you know you can tell look I'm a Mercedes fan okay I'm a big Mercedes fan but even I know look I'm not going to say oh yeah Max Verstappen passed Vettel because he was better nah nah he passed Vettel so easy because there was something wrong with Vettel's car. The Ferrari's car just wasn't at the races today, especially Vettel's car. Charles Leclerc, there was a bit, there wasn't much really wrong with it. Charles Leclerc's car seemed like it was um, running a lot better than Vettel's, but um, Vettel's, he just wasn't at the races today. His car wasn't at the races. He wasn't at the races. Max Verstappen passes him at lap thirty-one. DRS done him. Ricardo retires at lap thirty-one. So. Ricardo had that bad incident at the beginning, like I mentioned, with his wing. He comes into the pit, changes the wing, and he went on for another 31 laps. And he just said it was over. There's nothing he could do. He pushed his car to the, uh, as much as he can. But in the end, he retired at lap 31. Um, lap 31, Roman Grosjean retires. After that pit incident, he pitted at lap... F he pitted at... Um, yeah, he pitted... I think it was lap 20 or one of them. He pitted because Roman Grosjean, his wheel wasn't... He had a delay in the pit. He came, in, he came into the pits, changed his tyre. His front left tyre got stuck. And, yeah, it was lap 14. He came into the pits. His front left tyre got stuck. Um, the finally got it off, put the new one on, but he seemed like they didn't put it on properly. Because I've got to admit, when I saw him come out the pits, right, um, and Roman Grosjean, and lap 14, he's... His um, tire, his tire, his front left tire, the one that the struggled putting the tire on, same side. It looked a bit loose, but finally in lap thirty one, he got too loose, and then he had to retire out from the race at lap thirty one. So Roman Grosjean's um, bad luck continues as well. Um, lap thirty four, Hamilton said on the radio, my he was losing grip. Um, he said his his back end's gone. And there's nothing he can do about it. And I think I saw Toto. I can't really, I can't say he said it for sure. I've he, he, um, I saw I saw him say something on the mic, and it, and it looked like he said um, that it's not going to happen today. Basically, just stay in second and hold your line. 
Now this thing, what I'm going to get onto now, this Ferrari thing with Charles Leclerc and Vettel, this really pissed me off. Especially with the Sky commentators, it pissed me off. Right? Lap 51, Vettel was struggling. Charles Leclerc was, I think, a few minutes before, about a few minutes before lap 51 in the 40s, he was way behind. Charles Leclerc made up so much time on Vettel. Lap 51, he got DRS on Vettel and he was, and he didn't pull the trigger. And even the commentator says, on the, on the, he goes, why isn't Charles Leclerc passing Vettel? Um, the, the DRS this year is massive. He should be able to breeze past Vettel. But there was team orders. The team orders told him to stay behind Charles Leclerc. Simple. Now, I'd understand if Vettel was fighting for the title and it was like about four or five races to go and Ferrari said to them, you know what, stay behind Vettel. Vettel needs the points. I get that. That was a bit like with um, Lewis Hamilton at Russia when he was fighting with um, Sebastian Vettel. And then even though Lewis Hamilton was ahead in the table, he still wanted them extra points. So they told Valtteri Bottas to move over. I get it. I get that. But I don't. the thing I don't get is why are they telling Charles Leclerc to stay behind Vettel, yeah, and it's the first race of the season. It doesn't make sense. Charles Leclerc could have easily passed Sebastian Vettel, but they told him now stay behind Vettel Ferrari. To me, that is just total disrespect to Charles Leclerc. He's coming. If he's faster than Vettel, let him stay ahead. He's ob today, he was obviously the faster driver, but they told him, no, nah, no, nah, don't pass Vettel, stay behind and then when the commentators come to Sky commentators, Sky says, oh, I, don't, I didn't really hear anything. I don't think they told him to do that. Maybe they just told him to stay there because oh, we're going to get the points anyway. But if that was Lewis Hamilton, like when Lewis Hamilton was in Russia, yeah, when Toto pressed the tactical button, yeah, and told Bottas to move over for Lewis Hamilton, the Sky commentators were on him like fly and shit. Because it's Ferrari and it's not Lewis Hamilton. Oh no, it's one of them. It's Ferrari decided to do that. It's up to them. This is what I'm talking about, the boys' commentary on Sky Sports. I ain't going to get into that today, but you know where I'm coming from. If you watch the highlights, you'll see where I'm coming from. If you watch the race, you know what I'm coming from. You know where I'm coming from. So I thought that was a bit out of order. So when it comes to the end, Valtteri Bottas got the win. So I'll go through how it ended. Valtteri Bottas with the win, second, second Lewis Hamilton. Oh, let's get this curse around here. Oh, let's get this on there. Yeah, Valtteri Bottas with the win. Lewis Hamilton second. Max Verstappen third. Oh, no, I thought this out. Max Verstappen third. And uh, fourth, Sebastian Vettel. Fifth, Charles Leclerc. They were the top five. So, hold on. They were the top five. Kevin Magnussen was six. Seventh was Nico Hockenberg. Eighth was Kimi Raikkonen. So, Kimi Raikkonen done all right for the car he had, to be fair. Um, eighth was Lance Stroll. Tenth was Daniel Fiat. Eleventh was Pierre Gasly. Twelfth was Lando Norris. Thirteenth was Sergio Perez. Fourteenth was Alanda, uh, uh, Alexandra Alban. Fifteenth was Antonio Giovinazzi. And 16th was George Russell, George Russell, 7th for Robert Kibita, and DNF didn't finish for Roman Grosjean, Daniel Ricciardo, and Carlos Sainz with the retirement with the fire. So that's how it finished. Now, the tables, as we, as we see after the first race, Beltrue Bottas is first place, top points, 4 points, 26 points. He would have had 25 points, but because um, Valtteri Bottas got the fastest lap, that new, that new rule that just came into it, what's just come into it this year, if you get the fastest lap on the race, you get an extra point. So we've got four maximum points, 26 points. Second, Lewis Hamilton with 80 points. Third, Max Verstappen with 15 points. And fourth, with Sebastian Vettel, 12 points. And Charles Leclerc, 10th. With now nah, Charles Leclerc fifth with ten points, and um, Kevin Magnussen with eight points, um, Nico Hockenberg six points, Kimi Raikkonen four points, Lance Stroll two points, Daniel Fiat at one point, and the rest Pierre Gasly, Lando Norris, Sergio Perez, 
Alexandra Alban, Antonio Giovanozzi and George Russell, Robert Kibita, no points at all that weren't in the teams, in the points. Now, constructors, if we can get that up. Mercedes on top with 44 points. Ferrari in second with 22 points. Third place, Red Bull with 15 points. And fourth place, um, Haas, 8 points. Renault, fi um, fifth with 6 points. Um, Alfa Romeo with 4 points, 2 points. Um, racing points. And Scuba Ferrari. Um, no, Scuba Ferrari. Toro Rosso, Honda, one point, and McLaren and Williams, he had to score points. Hopefully, that will change further on in the season. So, yeah, that's how it ended today. I could try and play a few interviews on here. I've got a few interviews. One from Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, Kimi Raikkonen, and George Russell. So, I'll play a few interviews. I can't show you no video because of copyright but I can if you listen to it you'll be able to hear the hear them speak. So the interview there's Daniel Ricardo first, I'm gonna play him. See if it'll play through. Like I says I can't show no video. Yeah, I mean it was I guess it was really over from, from the start. So um I just saw it on board, it's pretty much what I remember in, in my head, so I I feel like that was translated but uh yeah, just uh, I thought the start was okay. I saw Perez didn't get a great one, so there was a bit of room on the inside. So I went. He he kind of covered a bit, so I, I just went a bit more, and because uh, I wasn't sure when it happens that quick, you don't know how much they're going to go. So you just try and follow their uh, their trend, and then um, yeah, just drop the wheel on the grass, and then there was a massive bump or ditch, or I, I don't know what it was, but uh, that was that. So um, I don't really know. It's just. It's a terrible word, but I'm... As you, as you could um, hear Boy's voice, very disappointed. He knew the race was over from the beginning. But he went on as long as he could. That's why he pitied on lap 31. Tried his best. Now here's Max Verstappen. So he's very satisfied. He's very happy. But he said there's still work to do. So I'll play this video now. If it will play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. Max Verstappen talking. Yeah, very satisfied. Um, of course, to get by a Ferrari on, on the on the track is not easy around here because it's just very difficult to 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 follow in general. Um, but yeah, of course, happy to pull that move off and then also challenge Lewis for second. Um, yeah, was was a good feeling. Of course, um, I think there's still work to do, but to to start the season like this. In third, and also the first podium for Honda in the V6 era, that, um, that's a great start. Valtteri Bottas won the first... What else is there? We've got George Russell. Very disappointed for Williams. Very disappointed. Should blow... Come on, video. Play. Hold on. There we go. How was your Formula One debut? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty awesome when you say that, but obviously, um, you know, a bit of a long, lonely race, and the end of they just had to bring the car home because we are so far off the pace, and it was pretty much a test session for us just to understand we did an, an additional pit stop to, to try the all three compounds of tyres and that's unfortunately where we where we are at the moment. Do you th Very disappointed for George Russell, such a big talent but it's just, there's just cars not having it is it? Um, it's just going to continue for the rest of the season. Williams, I hope it don't but I've just got a bad feeling, I've just got this feeling that it is um let's go for some more interviews here is lando norris he said he was very disappointed in his performance today i think i thought he'd done okay i thought he'd done good lando your formula one debut yeah. no points at the end of it but how did it feel to be a grand prix driver um i mean it felt good i was quite lonely out there for a lot of it um so it felt pretty long 
but uh, yeah, very happy to get it out of the way. You know, I was quite nervous coming in about everything, and I feel a lot more confident now and going into Bahrain because of of how I've done this weekend and just getting it out of the way. But at the same time, a bit more disappointed about the how I did today because there was more potential to be had. I just didn't maximize everything. Basically, a couple of mistakes, and uh, yeah, that's why we didn't get any points. So that's something I need to work on for next time. Was it the start that really cost you? You lost a few places there. Um, I wouldn't say so much to start, it obviously put me back a little bit. The initial start wasn't too bad, or, I mean it wasn't great. Uh, I got a bit eager on the acceleration phase and got a bit of worse spin. Um, but it was more the Giovinazzi part of it. Um, everyone else Giovinazzi. went straight past and I just struggled to take it close and, and just make it clean basically. So um, yeah, that cost me the, the position on Stroll and Kvyat and a better chance of, of top 10. I wouldn't have been guaranteed. But, a better chance. Um, so that's just something I need to work on for next time. Thank you. Thank you. Seems very. I thought I thought he'd done all right, but it's good that he's got that passion in. Um, his first race, uh, most most people having an F1 debut or racing debut, whatever they do, whatever they do in F1, GT, Le Mans, whatever. But um, they'll say, you know, oh, it's my first race. I'll do better next time. But he's really hard on himself because he knows he can do better. But I thought he'd done all right, I did. I thought he was fine, Lando Norris. Now nah, let's un let's go on to Charles Leclerc. Your, your Ferrari debut, but did it go as you'd hoped? Not really. Uh, I think the start was pretty good. Uh, going into on the outside of Seb in the first corner. I don't know whether he has seen me or not, but then I had to go in the cross uh, because I had no space. So then I lost two positions and then back to fifth and I just did my race from there. Did a small mistake in the first stint. Um, but yeah, then it was pretty positive. The second stint was pretty quick. Um, and then we had to keep positions at the end. So fourth and fifth of team, I think top three was not reachable today, but uh, we'll work to try and understand what, what went wrong. And, uh, and go from there. But at the end also, Melbourne is quite a strange track and it never really represents the, the reality of things. So uh, we'll work on our side, but I don't think we're that far. I was gonna say, are you confident that this Ferrari car is still capable of fighting Mercedes and Red Bull right at the front? Well, at the end, as Lewis said, and as we said, uh, it's not like we changed massively the cars from Barcelona testing to here. And it's, yeah, normally what you finish in Barcelona is more or less the car you arrive there. And we were quick in Barcelona, there's no reasons that our car now is not quick anymore. So I'm pretty confident that our pace is somewhere there. Um, we were not strong on this race, but uh, but I'm pretty sure we'll recover in the next race. Okay, so he's basically saying what you kind of mirror, mirroring, mirroring what um, Lewis Hamilton says. So it's a strange track, it's one of them tracks when you get in front, it's hard to take over. It doesn't really represent the car's speed. Uh, he said the next one in Bahrain, you're probably you're going to see the better Ferrari. That's basically what he's saying. He's confident. He said a little thing at the beginning. If you listen to what he said, he says that um, when he was coming on coming on the outside of Vettel, um, he weren't sure if Vettel saw him or not. Basically, Vettel should have kind of moved over a bit so he could kind of slip into the gap. But Vettel weren't giving him no room. Kind of fought him off the track. That's what he's saying. I'm not sure if Vettel saw me or not. So there's a little thing, um, a little inclination, a little a little hint that um, there's something to come between them two. Especially if we start to like, qualify in Vettel, that'd be interesting. Anyway, now on to Lewis Hamilton. Talking about turn Lewis, one. Lewis obviously looks like Dusted it was all after turn hinging one. on the start, this one. Was it sort of a case that once you got to the first run of pit stops, it's whole positions, or were you still chasing battery down? No, 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 once, once, we, got through the, once we got through the first corner, it was pretty much done and dusted. So it was really about well. bring, bringing the car home and bagging the points really and um, naturally I had to pit a lot earlier so I had a long long stint in that second stint so uh, I just drove super super under par to, uh, to try and make sure I had tyres left at the end of the race. Were you always comfortable with Max when he was closing you down because he, he was pushing hard? And is it at least encouraging from a Mercedes point of view? I mean, you must look at the pace of the lead car and what's possible yeah, no, here. No, an incredible, incredible weekend for the team. Really, really happy. We got maximum points. And, um, and Valtteri did an exceptional job today. So congratulations to him. So there you go. So basically what he's saying after the first turn, when Valtteri um, was off, he, he knew it was over then. He was just basically there to manage his tyres. So now let's go on to Kimi Raikkonen. This one's only 39 seconds. 
Kimmy, talk us through your race. What were the challenges you encountered today? I think pretty poor start and then uh, lost the place, but I uh, managed to gain a one, uh, one back. So after that, we had a small issue with the rear brake because uh, tear off went in, in the brake cooling. So we had to stop much earlier than we were planning because of that to clean it up. But uh, yeah, to me, the car was fast, but um, I could get close, but uh, that's about it. I think it's the, it's the track layout that makes it very difficult to overtake. So. Yeah, I think a uh, positive feeling. Um, I think we could have got better every end result, but uh, we take this and go for next one. Okay, it's one of them. One of them. Valtteri Bottas won the first DHL fastest lap of... Uh, so basically that's what everyone is. Let's listen to Vettel now. Last one now, put Vettel on. See what he's got to say. Seb, fourth place. Is that really what you are expecting when you came here to Melbourne? I didn't expect anything. First race, I think you never really expect uh, a certain result, but so certainly I expected better form, uh, particularly today. So uh, a bit surprised, especially this. I think the first stint was in line with what we saw the whole weekend, but the second stint was off. Not sure why. I was wondering why I was so slow. So uh, yeah, I haven't got an answer yet. And do you think Ferrari can recover quickly from this, though? Are you more optimistic for Bahrain? Yeah, I mean, it's a long year. Obviously, now we need to get back and understand, uh, you know, surprising and shocking how fast Mercedes was and how easy it was for them today. But, um, you know, for us, we look at ourselves and uh, we have now a couple of days to, to have a good look, um, you know, read all the feedback again, go through everything that we collected and see what we can do and come up with uh, in, in the next uh, two weeks. Putting aside speed, does the car actually feel good to drive? I mean, if there wasn't a Mercedes there, would it feel like we've got a great car? Uh, no, not this weekend. Um, Barcelona winter testing was really good, and uh, I didn't have, you don't really track. have a reference, but I thought, you know, I gave also the feedback Basically straight away. The the really, really strong. That's the message I'm but, getting. Uh, this weekend, no, I didn't, you know, get quite on top of it and in the race. I expected it to get better, but it was the opposite. So we need to have a good look now. So that's it. And that's how it ended. That was the interview is over. So, this is 2018 Australian Grand Prix review over. Um, I'll see you in two weeks in Bahrain. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on YouTube, Solo P1. Follow me on Twitter if you want to talk about sim racing, F1, any debate really. Solo P1, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram on Solo double underscore P1. And follow me on Twitch, Solo P1. This is Solo P1. Signing out now. Twitch is solo underscore P1. So this is solo P1 signing out of the 2019 F1 Australian Grand Prix. See you later, guys. See you in two weeks at Bahrain for the qualifying review. Bye.